Hello everyone, welcome to the class once again. I hope you are all doing good and you are in the best of your health. So we are learning the chapter of elasticity and we have done Hooke's law. We learned what is Young's modulus, bulk modulus and shear modulus. We also saw what is the potential energy stored in a wire when it is stretched. That is when you are applying a stress on a body. Now let's go further. Let's see some more property of elasticity. Let's see how a material behaves, how, is how its elasticity changes under certain conditions. Now, first of all, regularly we are seeing that we are applying a stress on a body. That is by stress, I mean that force is applied on the body by which it gets deformed and upon the removal of the force, the body retains or regains its original shape and that is the property of elasticity. Now, let me tell you about some terms that we shall know. The first one is elastic after effect. This is elastic after effect. Now, what happens? In some situation, making some instruments, we use some materials, it will be like a spring-like thing where it has to go through a torsional condition. By torsional, I mean you have to rotate it. It has to rotate it and it has to stop. It has to unwind itself. In such a case, we can use certain materials which will actually reach to the original state instantly. That is, it will take less time. But there are some materials which will take more time to reach its original or initial state. So whenever regular torsional effect is applied on a material, what, I, what do I mean by this? Let's say we have a material in this way. If we try to twist it, keeping its bottom fixed, if we try to twist it, we are trying to give it a twisting effect. If we try to twist it, so what will happen? It will rotate, keeping its bottom fixed. Now upon, upon the removal of the torque, upon the removal of the twisting effect, it will try to regain its original structure, original shape and again, but the time that will be taken, that would be, for some material it can be quick, it can be less time, for some material it will be taking more time for it to retain or regain its original shape and size. So first of all, we have one material that is quartz, it takes very less time, it takes very less time to regain its original shape and structure. It takes very less time for quartz to regain. Second, we have, if you take glass, this will take hours to regain. It takes more time, more time to regain its original structure. So depending on the requirement, we may use materials under such torsional state, although we'll be using such materials which will be actually quickly regaining its original structure. Because that is the elastic after effect once it is left to some torsional condition, some torque is applied on it so that it can rotate. Upon the removal, it has to regain its original structure and that is the elastic after effect. The time taken will be less for some and for some it will be more. Next one is, next term that you should know, that is the elastic fatigue. Elastic fatigue. Now, whenever we use materials to construct certain object, now see machines are made up of metals and bridges are made up of metals are used in constructing bridges. Railway bridges you must have seen definitely. Those are constructed of steel that is a metal. Now you see here, while constructing these materials, while constructing these actually objects, materials are used, these materials are regularly acted upon, regular strain, regular stress is applied on it and then stress is removed. What happens on several repeated stress, after several repeated stress, it reaches to such a state that the strength of the material will be weakened. After repeated stress, we find that the material loses its strength or we can say that it will be of more, no more to be used or it will be unsafe to use such material or such object. Bridges like last class I told you about the bridges, it will be left unsafe for use. Railway bridges you must have seen, after certain years of use, the government announces that this bridge cannot be further used. So it is collapsed and a new bridge is constructed instead of the old bridge. So sometimes you must have seen that uh, actually a barrier is applied, barrier is actually 
put up near a bridge so that you cannot enter the bridge because that will be unsafe for your use because it has got gone through a very long time very long time has passed and it has lost its strength due to regular application of stress you have applied this stress you have removed this stress this is what uh, is elastic fatigue so you can understand from the term elastic fatigue that is loss of strength so what you can understand you should understand loss of strength of the material that is the elastic fatigue fatigue that means tiredness the material gets tired it is saying that now i cannot be further used so that is the elastic fatigue of the material further let's learn some factors affecting elasticity factors affecting elasticity now what what factors can affect the elasticity of the material have you ever seen an iron man beating up a metal hammering a metal have you ever seen an, an iron man an iron smith actually hammers the metal why does he do so try to understand let's try to understand the first factor affecting elasticity the first upon hammering or rolling a metal hammering or rolling let me tell you you must have regularly observed that an iron smith actually hammers the metal regularly because that will increase the elasticity that can be made up into sheets and when you hammer it that elasticity will be increased you know why because the lattice the lattice within the object the lattice that is the molecular lattice which is actually making up the complete molecule how they are arranged that will be disrupted the plastic behavior will be lost so actually upon hammering plastic behavior is lost and hence elasticity increases elasticity increases upon hammering so the metal it will be good after hammering the metal will be good to use in the required condition where more stress you have to apply so that the metal can easily regain its original structure and it will not get deformed easily so upon hammering or rolling we can see that the elasticity increases so it will be better to use and we must have observed iron smith generally hammering any object second annealing let me tell you the term annealing we can use only one n here two when i showed here it will be only one n upon annealing now annealing is what you must have observed again the iron smiths they actually heat up any metal and then they leave it to cool down slowly why do they do so they heat up the metal and then they leave it to cool down slowly because they want the metal to be converted to the to suit for the required condition sometimes you must have seen that they are going to heat the metal and leave it to cool taking some time so first one is you what you do actually you are actually annealing heating and then leaving it to cool heating to high temperature leaving to cool in this condition the metal will become more ductile the metal becomes more ductile that is it can be made up into sheets it will become more ductile you must have seen iron smith they heat up the metal they leave it to cool down so that they can make sheets from this sometimes you must have seen that they actually heat it to very high temperature and they actually cool it then again reheat to some lower temperature this is known as temper tempering the metal tempering this means what first of all you heat it to high temperature heat to high temperature then again you have to reheat to a lower temperature heat to a high temperature then you have to reheat 
to a lower temperature. So cool down, then again reheat to lower temperature. Such metal will be very strong and they will be tough. And then it is left to cool down. Such metals will become very tough. They become tough and elastic. They become tough and elastic. This is what we find if they will be heated. When the metal is tempered, you temper that means heat it to very high temperature, cool down, again reheat to a very low temperature and then again cool down. The metal will become tough and elastic. Here I told you the metal becomes more ductile and it is more flexible. This is what we have obtained on heating and then leaving to cool. When you heat it to very high temperature and then leave it to cool, you get more ductile and flexible metal. So what do you do? Take note till here. I will start after rubbing the other end. Now hope you have understood why sometimes you heat to a very high temperature and then you cool down so that the material becomes ductile and flexible and sometimes, sometimes you heat it to high temperature then reheat to a lower temperature and then we make the metal more tough and elastic. Let's go with the next factor that is affecting the elasticity. What if impurity is added? So effect of impurity that is the third one effect of impurity. Now sometimes some impurities can actually increase the elasticity and some impurities can decrease the elasticity. So we cannot say definitely whether the elasticity will increase or will decrease depending upon adding the impurity. So it has got both way effect. It can you can even increase the elasticity or you can even decrease the elasticity upon adding the impurity. It may increase or decrease the elasticity of the material. Increase or decrease the elasticity of the material. This is what the effect of impurity can happen on the material. So we are not definite about whatever impurity you are adding. That may increase, that may decrease. You have to infuse impurities. Sometimes, as for the requirement, you may find that the impurity is increasing the elasticity. So, you may add it. If you want to decrease the elasticity, so for some other impurity, you infuse it, you may be finding that it will decrease the elasticity. The effect of impurity, not one thing. You have both ways. It can increase or decrease. Last but not the least, that is the fourth one, effect of temperature. Now temperature generally what happens? When you increase the temperature, generally a material will lose its elasticity. Its elasticity decreases. So upon increasing the temperature, upon increasing the temperature, the elasticity is decreased. So upon increasing the temperature, we find that the elasticity decreases. And that is what generally we can think of. And I'll tell you the reason why it happens. Upon increasing temperature, elasticity is decreased. That is plastic behavior is increased. Elasticity is decreased. Because the lattice is structured in such a way, it will be tried to restructure in such a way that the plastic behavior is increased. The lattice, the molecular lattice, it will be behaving in such a way, it will be structured in such a way that will show more plastic property and hence elasticity will be decreasing when you increase the temperature of the substance. Let me tell you one exception is there. Invar. Invar elasticity has no effect. Invar elasticity, inverse elasticity has got no effect with change in temperature. Invar's elasticity doesn't change upon changing temperature. So you change the temperature but still 
इनवर्स इलास्टिसिटी वोट चेंज सो द जनरल थिंग इज दिस अपॉन इंक्रीजिंग टेम्परेचर द इलास्टिसिटी विल बी डिक्रीज बट देर इज वन मेटेरियल इनवर दैट इलास्टिसिटी विल नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन द चेंजिंग टेम्परेचर इट विल रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट इट विल नॉट चेंज सो ऑल दिस फैक्टर्स आर एक्चुअली इन्फ्लुएंसिंग द इलास्टिसिटी वी गॉट ऑन हैमरिंग इंक्रीज द इलास्टिसिटी इलास्टिसिटी देन वी गॉट एनीलिंग इट विल बी बिहेविंग इन डिफरेंट वे समटाइम यू कैन मेक द मेटल डक्टाइल समटाइम यू कैन मेक द मेटल मोर फ्लेक्ट मोर टफ एंड इलास्टिक by actually heating and then reheating and then we got effect of impurity that can work in both ways it can increase the elasticity it can decrease the elasticity and the last one but not the least that is the factor affecting the temperature normally we increase the temperature the elasticity is lost and if you decrease the temperature elasticity will be increased so this was all about some factors affecting elasticity we also learned about elastic after effect that's upon the action of torsional torsional effect the material tries to regain but actually will take more time for some material and less time for some other material then we got elastic fatigue that is upon regular application of stress the material becomes weak it will lose its compressive strength and it will be left unsafe for use or let's say we cannot use the further the material in machines you know that machines are actually on upon regular use it will actually uh, be no more to be used. you see even car engines also they have got a life because it's under regular stress condition stress and stress strain condition so that's why it will be left uns unused i mean it will be of no more use to us after completion of certain duration or after certain kilometer kilometer run or after some time so that's why we have understood whenever material is used so all this chapter has let us to understand in, wh in what condition in what situation which material we shall use in building bridges in building the wires of the crane in building the beams beam support in our houses we learned how this chapter can prove us to be more useful while learning the material and the similar kind of concept will be taught to you when you reach in your engineering classes when you learn about mechanical engineering there is a course called strength of material in short people use the term som som to denote strength of material where all this concept will be utilized so i want you all to understand this chapter very nicely i'll give you a quick recap of the entire chapter we learned about the elasticity when an object it is in a condition of stress it tries to regain its original shape and structure that is the elasticity perfectly elastic it will regain its original shape and size perfectly inelastic it's not going to regain partially elastic it will be left with some deformation it will not come to its original shape and structure we learned about the stress and strain then i told you the ratio of stress and strain is constant and that is hooke's law we use different modulus of elasticity somewhere you can use this the same term as modulus of rigidity now modulus of elasticity we used for a linear wire young's modulus then when a pressure was applied on an object at some particular position its volume was changing we use the term bulk modulus then for shearing stress and shearing strain we use the term shear modulus and so on we learned about the potential energy thing we learned about certain more things application of elasticity and so on I want you all to practice more questions in this chapter that will be very much useful and in coming section in coming chapter in the coming classes I'll be taking with more discussive discussion questions so that you can understand what kind of questions are asked in your board examination in your competitive examination that are going to appear through so this is the time do take note of the entire lecture that I have taken for this chapter and do practice more questions I wish you all the very best till the time do take good care of yourself and thank you everyone for joining me here